Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Now, if you've seen my last two videos, I've been playing around with the Let's Resin Chameleon Powders. And a common question, especially from some of my patrons, was could this be used with polymer clay? Now, I am no polymer clay artist, disclaimer, but we're gonna have a go. I really only have some basic tools because again, I'm not a polymer clay artist. I've got some cutters. I'm gonna do some stamping. I bought myself some Fimo Soft and some Sculpey Soft. Now my original clay, I think it's gone off. So if you know what you're doing, cause I don't, can you help me out? Can I save this? It feels rock hard and really, really crumbly. So I've got so much of this left. Let me know please in the comment section. I've got my rolling pins and I've also got these acrylic blanks. These are from Moray at Lothian. He did these on his laser cutter. These are gonna help me roll my clay out to an even depth. Now, the Fimo is 110 degrees at 30 minutes. That is what I'm gonna bake that for. The Sculpey, really confusing, 15 minutes per one quarter inch thickness now. Listen, there's no quick math here in my brain, so I'm actually gonna bake them both exactly the same as the Fimo recommended, which is 110 degrees for 30 minutes. But 10 minutes for luck, I'm gonna put them in for 40. So of course, I know about the word conditioning, a big word for me. I did watch some YouTube video basics. I know you have to condition the clay, so I spent around 30 minutes kind of molding it, squeezing it, pushing it, kneading it, just to get it to a malleable form where it's really easy to roll out. Now, the first thing I did, I really had intentions of making some dad charms or dad key rings. You know, Father's Day's coming up in the UK. It is the 19th of June. I don't know if it is that date around the rest of the world, but I know our Mother's Days are very different. The UK has a different Mother's Day to the rest of the planet. So I don't know if Father's Day is the same. But my intention really was to just do some stamping and just have some fun with it. And as soon as I started putting the chameleon powder onto the clay, I was uninspired. I It wasn't really popping out at me. It wasn't giving me the wow factor that I was looking for. So <laughs> first thing I did was I went to my patrons. So massive thank you to my patrons. Honestly, you guys helped me out so, so much. Oh, this leaf cutter, I have to mention it. I've got some plunger cutters. I really, really love them. But again, the chameleon powder wasn't doing anything for me. So yeah, I, I went onto my Patreon page and I spoke to my patrons. I told them that I was doing this and it just wasn't filling me with joy. And thank you to the advice I was given because honestly, I ran straight to Amazon and got some black oven bake clay. Now, this is when things started to change. This was a game changer. Purchased this myself. I have worked for Arteza in the past, but I did buy this. And again, this was Arteza soft black clay. And it was about 12 pounds, which I think is a really good price for this much clay. And I love it. So again, this will be linked down below in my Amazon storefront. I am so easily pleased. Look at this pattern. I don't know why I get so easily pleased. It reminds me so much of plasticine when you first take it out of the wrapper. Did everyone here have plasticine as a child? Is that a, is that a brand name? I don't know if that's just a brand name, but yeah, I had it all the time as a child. So I'm just rolling it out. And of course these acrylic blanks are just making sure that my rolling pin rolls it at an even thickness throughout. Now, I decided to not get fancy schmancy and do all of the stamping. I decided to just go basic and cut out a load of black circles just for experimental purposes and to test every single one of these chameleon powders. I think it was important for me to show you every single color in the whole Let's Resin kit and that is what I did. I went and punched them out. Now, as I said at the beginning, I am not a polymer clay artist. So if you are, hopefully you'll find this video helpful for its scientific purposes. <laughs> I know you're probably crying into your soup at the way I'm cutting and the way I'm doing things. But again, I have to say, I know I'm not a seasoned polymer clay artist, but I had the most therapeutic 
afternoon in my craft room making these so i definitely want to explore polymer clay again in fact i don't even remember if i've got any videos on my channel but guys look at this absolute game changer with the black oven clay because oh my goodness me this is what i was looking for this was the wow factor that i was really looking for hoping it would pop out of the screen this is my favorite color as you know if you've watched my last two videos the galaxy it's a wow so i am using a soft fluffy brush to brush the chameleon powders onto the polymer clay and honestly after that i'm just rubbing them over with my finger and i think the word is burnish is that the word i don't want to, i don't want to get it wrong and just like <laughs> have people who know what they're doing crying over what I'm actually saying but yeah I'm rubbing it on with a soft fluff, fluffy brush and then I'm rubbing my finger over each and every one to kind of get it to stick to the clay now I did watch a video that tested dry like brushing it on wet clay or the baked clay it doesn't work on the baked so if you take it straight out of the oven and brush it on it will just wipe straight off so you do really need to do this technique while the clay is still unbaked but guys look at these powders oh my gosh i know i said it in my last video and the video before but oh i love them i truly love them the colors are just magical so again, I'm brushing all over the surface, all around the sides as well. I am doing the sides and I don't film every single one where I'm rubbing it over with my finger. This is just a little bit of left handedness here because I am right handed, but the angle of the camera, I really needed to use my left hand. So forgive the wobbly. With the last three, I've now used all the colours. So with the last three, I did decide to get a little bit bougie, as the kids say, and do some stamping. So of course, I went in with my absolute favourite colour, the teal, because, oh my gosh, I love it. I mean, I love Galaxy, but mm. I'm going to stamp it with this Ammonite. Now, I made these, you would have seen these on my channel before. I got this mould from Resinase. He now makes moulds, so that's red hot molds over on instagram check him out he made these himself that's his design absolutely beautiful but where i've stamped it and i've got some negative space in the black it's kind of pushed the powder down into i'm just going to give it a bit of a refresh and just dust some of this chameleon powder back over the surface i then did exactly the same with the next one and i just stamped in and look at this oh my gosh Okay, again, we lose some of it because it pushes it down in and creates some negative space. So I just did exactly the same thing again. Topped it up with some of that chameleon powder and what a difference it makes. I'm already a little bit in love with the ammonites. For the last one, I just grabbed a seashell and I pushed it down in there. And oh, so pretty. Do not get emotionally attached to this one though because RIP to the seashell. This is what they look like out in the sun and oh my goodness me. Okay, they're not as round as I'd like them to be but still gorgeous. As soon as I took them out of the oven, oh my gosh, I committed the ultimate sin and I tested the strength. I know we shouldn't but I did it and I snapped the seashell. So we do not see the seashell anymore in this video but look at these absolutely gorgeous the chameleon powder is coming off on my fingers now this happened with the white as well and i am now aware after speaking to my patrons again it can come off on your fingers and that's okay just brush any excess off it's actually coming off of the sides more than the top because again i rubbed it in on the top not the sides i am using uv resin now if you know me you know i'm not a i'm not a fan i'm not i don't use uv resin in most of my videos in fact i've only ever really used it as a glue but I purchased some from Vista. Now I am a Vista ambassador, so all of that detail will be down in the description box below and you can get four times, <laughs> yeah, four times your Vista miles off using my code. Now you saw a little clip there of my mask. I do wear my mask no matter. 
this is uv resin trust me it smells it smells even though it is not epoxy resin it is still a resin so please be safe now do not be like me use something smaller than a lollipop stick i had cocktail sticks so i did actually change to use cocktail sticks i'm just pouring some of that uv resin into the center and then i'm just going to tease it out to the edges using my cocktail sticks but again i'm not going to film every little part of the video and you can see here <laughs> my shabby shabby attempt at getting 90 degree angles on these pieces did not quite go to plan i've got so many rounded edges and of course some of this uv resin did seep over those edges so you know of course this is for experimental purposes only so that's okay handmade with love not perfection with the ammonites i decided that it's going to seep off no matter what i do because of the way the shell kind of comes around there you can see it's just going to naturally seep off the edge so i decided i'm already messy i might as well just rub it all over with my gloved hand and hope for the best <laughs> i did exactly the same with the magenta one as well and i'm already loving these i am just oh, I'm just, I already know these are my favourites. And kind of deep down, I was thinking, why didn't I just do the ammonites on all of them? But honestly, I just think for the experimental reason, it's just easier to see it in its natural state on a flat surface. And then what you do with your polymer would be up to you. I am going to give them all a torch. Now, my blowtorch goes really, really high where you get this huge flame. We do not want that. So I'm putting it right down to the very bottom where it's almost barely even there so I'm just giving them all a blast I actually do this twice I come back about a minute later and I do it again now my nail lamp I've got a 120 watt nail lamp I don't know if this is good or bad but oh the reflection guys oh, the lamp did me dirty on the reflection but yeah I, I mean it did the job these cured in around about five minutes but of course the the nail lamp only goes up to a minute so I had to kind of keep sitting there pressing the button pressing the button pressing the button and look at this oh my gosh this uv resin beautiful finish super shiny absolutely gorgeous definitely have to use it in further videos because yeah i might be a little bit converted i think because i was getting super cheap uv resin shipped in I, I kind of never really got on with it and sometimes I had to cure for 15 minutes 15 but these were done in five and yeah really loving the chameleon the way it's popping the color shifting is true it's as true as it would be if you were using it in resin like like I have done in the past two videos yeah super super happy now i am still wearing a gloved hand because some of the uv resin did seep over the edges and down under which of course is not cured because the uv light doesn't hit underneath so i am being cautious and i'm still wearing my gloves but the tops are rock solid rock solid super shiny the chameleon powder is popping this one is particularly um, kind of sticky so i'm making sure i'm not touching the surface with my gloves i actually am going to just go back in and put these back upside down and make sure the bottoms are also cured but i am so so happy with these results i cannot tell you i cannot tell you i hope you've really found this helpful but honestly and truly I definitely want to try polymer clay I really do I want to do more with it I just I have it all now I have the three I have the three polymer clays and honestly even though I didn't really use the Fimo and the Sculpey for this technique I will definitely still use them I think they're all gorgeous they all three of them I would say out of the three the Sculpey was softer than the Fimo and the Arteza I'd say the Arteza was the hardest and then in the middle was the Fimo but equally just as good they all baked beautifully so yeah fully recommend the Arteza if you are interested of course it will be linked down below again the UV resin I'm not a fan I'll say it out loud but this has really helped me 
it's helped me understand UV resin a little bit more and because I got such good results I'm actually really excited to use it again you don't need me to tell you how I feel about the chameleon powders they are linked below they are stunning fully recommend and yes I am a let's resin ambassador but I'm not just saying it guys they are beautiful so like I said my next step I'm just gonna put these on a clean mat turn them upside down and get those bums cured Okay, we are at the end of the video. I hope you found this really, really helpful. Massive shout out to my patrons who save me weekly. <laughs> they, they bring me back down to earth on a weekly basis when things do not go to plan. So massive thank you as well to Miz and to Vivian who are polymer clay artists. I really feel like I need to sit down in a room with a polymer clay artist because I learn by doing and I learn by doing so much more than I would by watching a video or reading about it. I'm such a hands-on visual learner, so if anyone knows of any classes in the Essex area, <laughs> I'm all for that. But look at these, they are beautiful. The answer to the question is, yes, they worked, they are a dream. And listen, again, I don't know what I'm doing. So if you are a polymer clay artist, of course your results will be so much better than these. Your surfaces will be flat for one. <laughs> Your surfaces will be smooth. You won't be getting these lumps and bumps that you can see in mine. This is purely for testing purposes, experimental purposes. I've thoroughly loved it. Absolute therapy. The most relaxing afternoon. Cannot wait to do more. The UV resin, beautiful. All of these things I've not tried before, all combined. Really happy with how successful I was. Despite the wobbly edges and the bumps and the lumps. So... Hope you found it helpful and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.